What the f What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a card discussion on Neospatian Aqua Dolphin. This was the breakout tech card of the North American WCQ. So I thought it'd be a good idea to discuss in depth essentially how this card came into existence as well as the pros and cons considering the current meta environment. But before we get into that, I wanna give a huge shout out to my newest patrons as always. So big shout out today to Nachunal Geographic and Eternal Samurai 22. You guys are the reason that this channel channel is growing strong. And if you guys want to help support me in the channel through Patreon, then check out the Patreon link in the description below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So Neospatian Aqua Dolphin is a water level 3 warrior effect monster with 600 attack, 800 defense, and an effect that reads as follows. Once per turn, you can discard one card. Look at your opponent's hand and choose one monster. If you control a monster with attack greater than or equal to the attack of the chosen card, destroy the chosen card, and if you do, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Otherwise, take 500 damage. So, first and foremost, before we even get into the effect of this card, can we just discuss the fact that Neospatian Aqua Dolphin is actually meta relevant in 2018? That's what I love about about this game because cards like this that have never seen competitive play whatsoever will just randomly make an appearance like this due to the current climate and that is what I absolutely love about Yu-Gi-Oh! But let's go ahead and dive into this card a little bit more in depth. So before we get into the effect, the stats of this card are very important because it's a warrior, it's level 3, and if you haven't already figured it out, this card essentially just belongs in Goki. It's almost like it was designed for Goki before Goki even existed as an archetype, but it just makes perfect sense. Goki is an archetype completely comprised of warriors, and being level 3 is very important because it allows you to go into your invoker plays, and that's kind of just how you go off and can completely extra link your opponent. So, the effect aside, the stats of this card are very important, and frankly, if it didn't have these specific level uh, requirements or typings, I don't think this card would be nearly as viable as it is now. But getting into the effect, so there's three things about this effect that are very, very good, and we're going to be breaking that down one by one. So the first part of this effect that's very good is that you get to look at your opponent's hand. Any card that essentially has the ability to grant you information on what your opponent has is typically either banned or limited, and there's a really good reason for that. It's because these cards are just way too powerful. I mean, granted, a majority of them, like, you know, Confiscation, Forceful Century, are spell cards, so they're a lot more generic than something like Aqua Dolphin. But then you've got something, you know, like Mind Crush, which kind of falls in line with a card like this. Sure, Mind Crush is a lot more generic and a lot more decks can play it, but having an effect like this on a body that also happens to synergize with the rest of your deck is extremely good. Now, we're going to get into the practical application of this card here in a moment, but the thing about getting the information on your opponent's hand is that you're going to be able to play around every Every single card that they have because you're going to know everything. The only card that will remain an unknown is when you pass play to your opponent and they draw the card for turn, but pretty much you can deduce based off of everything else you already know, or you can assume, oh, they didn't have that card when I looked at their hand, that that could have been their sixth card. But the thing is, let's say they opened up a soul charge. Well, now you can tailor your plays to essentially be able to prevent soul charge from just being able to blow you out, even though in some circumstances a card that's a one of like Soul Charge, really can't be played around. It's nice having that information knowing that Soul Charge is gonna be lingering in your opponent's hand. Now the big reason why Aqua Dolphin was so popular is not only just because of the hand knowledge you're able to attain from this effect, but also because of the discard effect. One of the biggest weaknesses that Goki has is that if your opponent has a hand trap to maybe stop something like Isolde or Firewall Dragon or very specific points in the combo that a hand trap would be useful in, 
Neospatian Aqua Dolphin can rip that hand trap out of your opponent's hand before they even get to the point where they can use that hand trap to stop your combo. This is essentially one of the first cards you're going to play whether you're going into an Azold or an Invoker play because it happens to facilitate both of those starter conditions. But what's cool is Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring has zero attack. Droll Lockbird also has a very low attack. And guess what? You know, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit also happens to have zero attack. So even if Neospatian Aqua Dolphin is the only monster you control, you're able to destroy monsters out of your opponent's hand up to 600 attack. And since a majority of these hand traps have very low attack values, that means you're going to be able to rip any of these hand traps out of your opponent's hand before you're even going to start your plays and then also gain the knowledge to know, oh, I can destroy this hand trap, but my opponent happened to open two hand traps. And that could be the difference in deciding, do I want to just go for it and go in and just completely combo off? Or do I want to go ahead and pretty much bait out that second hand trap so then that way my opponent won't have anything on my next turn and then I can combo off and just kill them. There's so much value from being able to have a combination of opponent's hand knowledge plus being able to rip out any hand trap from their hand. And the thing is, Aqua Dolphin isn't just limited to ripping out hand traps. I mean, let's just say, for instance, you know, you have a monster that has higher attack value in comparison to Dolphin. Like, let's say you summon Marauding Captain and then summon Aqua Dolphin. Well, the cool thing here is that now Marauding Captain has the highest attack, so you can hit monsters that have up to 1,200 attack. And it pretty much just keeps extending from there. And depending on the attack value of the highest monster in your hand, it means you're going to be able to rip out cards out of your opponent's hand that have equal to or less than that attack value and that's very important because let's say you get to the point where you have a firewall dragon on the field and you haven't used your aqua dolphin you could potentially bounce aqua dolphin back to your hand resummon it from firewall's effect and rip even more cards out of your opponent's hand because firewall dragon's attack happens to be 2500 and that pretty much means you're going to be able to hit any single card in the meta but if you're going up against like a pure sky striker player if ray is the only monster in their hand and it's the only starter card they really have you can just hit Ray and just forcibly brick their hand and that's gonna put you in a pretty strong position not to mention you're probably just gonna extra link them anyway if you got the dolphin in the first place so you're gonna be pretty well off the third and final thing I really like about this effect though is that it adds an element to Goki that it didn't previously have by doing something a little bit unfair and that is being able to damage your opponent during the main phase. Now we know one of the most notorious ways that Trickstar or any Trickstar variant is able to compete and pretty much get away with stealing a lot of wins in this current format are the new end of match procedures. I mean Licorice Pass is pretty degenerate but frankly because of the new rules it's something we have to deal with. Aqua Dolphin does something in a very similar fashion, but you can actually do it during your main phase. Now, it is a bit risky because if you don't have a valid target to hit with Aqua Dolphin, you're going to be the one taking the 500 damage, and you might actually just lose as a result of that. But if you're able to pull it off, or let's say you're able to maybe do some combo facilitating with Nightmare Goblin and get a really big Link monster on the board, then go into your Dolphin so that you can pretty much guarantee you can hit any monster in their hand. As long as they draw a monster, you're probably going to inflict that 500 damage to them. You end your main phase, that's going to be end of match procedures, your life points are at 8k, they're at 7500, and you just won that game. I'm not necessarily condoning this as a viable strategy, nor is it in any way consistent. Consistent, but if you're in a scenario where you happen to be going to game three and you don't really want to draw with your opponent Aqua Dolphin provides a way for you to sneak out wins if you absolutely have to and you know yeah, Gaga got Cowboy something that uh, Goki was you know it pretty much can incorporate But it really just kind of depends on if you can make the rank four or if you hard draw the Aqua Dolphin It kind of comes down to one of those types of scenarios now Aqua Dolphin does have its downsides And I do want to discuss those as well first and foremost is that it cannot hit infinite impermanence now I would say behind Ash Blossom and Droll and Lockbird for this particular format, Infinite Impermanence is probably the third most popular hand trap. And the thing about Infinite Impermanence is that it pretty much dodges this, very similar to how Called by the Grave is pretty much immune to Impermanence as well, since it's not a monster. And that's a really big deal, because if you whiff off of Dolphin, and you see they still have Impermanence in hand, it kind of puts you in an awkward position, because yeah, you know the Impermanence is there, but you can't really play around it. Sure, you can try to bait it out, and maybe set up for next turn, and I guess that's better than playing directly 
directly into it, but it doesn't exactly remove the threat, and you also had to discard a card for the effect, so then you're down a card as well. It's not exactly a very good scenario. The second thing is that it does eat up your normal summon, which can be rather important in a deck like Goki, and drawing multiples of this card is very, very bad. I mean, take for instance a card like Junk Forward. If you draw two Junk Forwards, that's still pretty good because you can special summon one, normal summon the other, and now you've got your play. Same thing goes for something like opening double Hornet Drones or even double Suprex because you can normal one, special the other, and then you kind of have a play to go off of. Neo Spacing and Aqua Dolphin does require you to independently have another card aside from the Dolphin itself to be able to combo off. And if you don't have any of those extenders, whether it's the Junk Forward, whether it's the Marauding Captain, whether it's the Instant Fusion, then yes, you'll be able to get that knowledge from your opponent Opponent, but your play kind of ends there and so it's not really the best starter card for the deck but it still does a lot of really valuable things that a lot of players really consider it being worth running I mean there was 24 Goki players in the top 64 of the NAWCQ and a lot of those top deck profiles were running the Aqua Dolphin just because of the ability to rip hand traps out of their opponent's hand effectively acting as like a fourth fifth and sixth copy of called by the grave Last but not least, though, Aqua Dolphin, as really cool as it is, it's very, very niche in its application because this just happened to be one of those scenarios where the planets just all happen to align. Aqua Dolphin happens to be a warrior, it happens to be level three, and it happens to have an effect that is really good for the current moment, especially considering how the climate and the format has essentially evolved over the several years since this card's printing. You know, that happens every once in a while in Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this isn't a card that you're going to be playing, you know, in Sky Striker or in your Altergeist deck. This just happens to work because it has synergy that doesn't take away from the rest of your deck while also doing something that helps advance your game state and really kind of helps hedge your bets that you're going to be able to pull off extra linking your opponent in a very significant way. So definitely do keep that in mind, but I thought it was good to discuss this card in depth. I think it was a very, very good uh, just overall option. We're going to see how much Dolphin affects the European WCQ as well this upcoming weekend and I'm really excited to see what impact it truly has but guys those are just my thoughts let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Neo Space and Aqua Dolphin I'd really love to hear your thoughts guys thank you so much for watching the video be sure to like the video as always subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content and if you found this video helpful consider backing me on Patreon because just by pledging only one dollar a month you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.